Mike McWhorter is expected to arrive here in about an hour. Of course, we will be here throughout the night to cover whatever happens when those polling figures and those final votes start coming in. And these dispatchers here, they're not only keeping their eyes on the weather, they are, of course, more importantly, keeping their eyes on the roadways. Well, obviously, it would be so great if everyone could just stay in bed this morning, but of course, we have responsibilities. So if you do have to hit the roads, be aware that most of the main arteries are looking pretty good. Today's testimony once again focused on whether Vanessa Coleman was threatened when Shannon Christian and Chris Newsom were killed. Well, it's no surprise that downtown has been through a growth spurt of sorts over the past few years, and you can see just that as evidence in our list today. Coming up next on 10 News at 5, we'll run down your top five vote getters. That's coming up after the break. Yesterday afternoon, Ralph Kruger was on his way to pick up students at Farragut High School, but after a tip to authorities, his bus was parked and he was cuffed. A KPD officer caught up with Ralph Kruger on Interstate 40. The arrest warrant says he had a strong smell of alcohol on him, but the former bus driver has an explanation. I was use uh, mouthwash and I use uh, religiously and I also use deodorant and aftershave and stuff. Officers took him to a safer spot to perform a field sobriety test. The warrant says he failed. I can't walk a straight line one foot in front of the other. I got bad knees. I got arthritis. So you weren't putting any children at risk? Oh, I didn't have anybody on the bus, just myself. But you were going to pick them up though, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. And but so no. you don't but feel like there was I, anything wrong yesterday? No, I don't. But why did he refuse a blood alcohol test? I don't want myself stuck with uh, needles, if you don't mind. A and breathalyzer so, and a urine test is all it requires. Does the same thing. And you're sure you're positive it would have come up just fine? I know it would have because I would have gone ahead and done that. But they didn't explain anything to me. They just uh, handcuffed me way too tight, I might add, behind my back. And it wasn't fun, believe me. Have a great day. A KPD spokesman says the department only asks for blood tests because breathalyzers don't detect anything but alcohol, and the state only requires one test to be offered to a driver. Meanwhile, a bus company spokesman says before Kruger was hired, he passed a drug test, criminal background check, and DOT physical. The Knox County school system also selects drivers randomly for drug testing at least three times a week. John and Robin. Congressman Jimmy Duncan saw our story and took action, writing a letter to the VA in Washington. It's just so brilliantly beautiful. It honors those that have honored us. A long-standing tradition is underway once again here at the Tennessee Veterans Cemetery, but just barely. And despite the federal floral regulations that only allow flags on the graves during Memorial Day. It's just not logical to have a rule against flying the flag anywhere, no less in a solemn, natural, national, environment such this is on such hallowed ground it just doesn't make sense. It all started when, just like in years past, the cemetery director asked the state for the okay to put up the flags on Veterans Day. But this year, the rules were strictly enforced by this man who is new to the position. When the, I received the request, I researched the rules and followed the rules. Word spread and frustration mounted, making its way to the office of Congressman Jimmy Duncan. Whether it's a state cemetery or a federal cemetery, this rule makes no logic, has no logic to it. To allow flags to be placed on the graves during uh, uh, Memorial Day, but not on Veterans Day, makes no sense whatsoever. An appeal led to a waiver for this year. I cannot predict the future, but I think if the proper actions are taken, that it could possibly happen. Congressman Duncan is still waiting to hear back from VA officials in Washington, but he has said if necessary, he would introduce legislation to change those rules. John and Robin taking action. Brittany, thank you. It was a daily routine for Dr. Ed Deeds to stroll around his neighborhood. It kept this now nearly 90 year old man young, but it was what happened on one of those strolls that set in motion years of work for investigators and decades of pain for a then 12 year old boy. It was a crushing blow and that crushing blow stayed with me for quite a long time. Robert Mattress slowly began to heal and is now married with two young sons. 
He finds comfort in them, but is still troubled by the missing piece in his family history. This is where we start. This is where we start, the new beginning. A new beginning 25 years after he lost his mother, 29-year-old Betty Brown. Joyful, uh, very vibrant. Uh, she was colorful. She was a wonderful woman, and uh, her smile would light up the world. Uh, and she was like right here, right now, and she was the sweetest person to know, and she will always be there for you, always, always. It all started back on July 20th, 1985, when Dr. Deeds followed a strange odor into the woods off Montlake Drive in South Knox County. It was just all overgrown, and I had to sort of shove my way through. As soon as I saw it was a body, I, I figured I'd better get out of there. It was Betty Brown. She had been stabbed through the heart with a five-inch blade and then set on fire. Near the scene, Dr. Deeds discovered bloody footprints in his driveway. You can still see where investigators removed the pavement years ago. So they had evidence, a body, witnesses, and suspects, but... It just, it kind of went cold for, for whatever reason in 1987. Then, more than two decades later, Knox County Sheriff's Investigator Mitchell Buckner picked up the case. I thought, uh, might be able to solve this one. New technology means new tests on that pavement, some undergarments, and a cigarette pack found at the scene. There's a partial fingerprint on there, and it is not hers. Betty Brown was known to hang out here on Magnolia. She had a few run-ins with the law and sometimes worked as a prostitute here. That's why investigators want to come back to the area to try to re-interview the witnesses from back then and perhaps find the suspects too. There was actually three that really stood out. The, the descriptions, their physical descriptions, and their vehicle descriptions kept coming up. You know, they took somebody away that wasn't ready to go, and I wasn't ready to do the things that I should have done as an older son, you know. I was 12 at the time, still a baby, you know. That baby had to say goodbye to his mother through a closed casket and watch as she was buried in the county's indigent cemetery. Now this adult son wants answers, justice, and perhaps most importantly, a final peaceful resting place for his mother. For now, those things still elude him, but he still has hope. My hope then was the same as it is right now. Never give up until, you know, until God tell you to give up. And I don't think he tells people that. Brittany Bailey, 10 News. Going in the lion's den. Well, in this case, the bear's den. Before they can go to their new home, the bears must come out of this one. Once they're sedated, the bears get a workup. They're weighed in, measured. This is the part that the bears don't like, especially the females. Pinned with ear tags. She's famous now. <laughs> and tattooed on the inner lip, too. That way, TWRA has a record if these bears ever wind up back in human hands. This bear looks better than them. I'm glad there ain't no male bears around here because we'd be fighting them off. These bears came here to Appalachian Bear Rescue weighing between 15 and 25 pounds. They'll leave weighing between around 65 and 100 pounds. Um, the first year was not a great one for them, but because of all of the support from our wonderful bear lovers and the people that believe in ABR, we've put these bears out for a wonderful opportunity to have their second year in the wild. Finally, the bears go into this box for a little nap and a little drive to their new home. Our whole mission is to give bears a second chance, and this is showing that we can do our job. We'll probably never, never see these bears again. Yeah. And that's so that, what you want. that's exactly what we want. That's a successful release. Is the last time I see him is when he's jumping off his tailgate. Brittany Bailey, 10 News.